Welcome back to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video I'm going to talk about homogeneous systems of linear ordinary differential equations. I'm going to uh, just focus on the case of diagonalizable matrices. <clears throat> this will make sense as we go along. Uh, what are the objects we're talking about? We're talking about systems of differential equations. This means that I have several differential equations for several variables here three. Um, those are then of course functions of time which in the first uh, three equations here I've, I've written explicitly. So x1 of t, x2 of t and x3 of t. And I have differential equations for each of them. But now in such a way that they are all mutually dependent. So here you can see that x1 depends also on x2 and x3. x2 also depends on x1 and x3. And x3 also depends on x1 and x2. All functions are linear and the coefficients are constant, they're not time varying. Then we can write the resulting system in a vector fashion. So we define a vector x, which I've done here in the second uh, equation, um, or the second group of equations. We can write a vector x consisting of the entries x1, x2, x3. We can collect all the coefficients a, i, j in a matrix a, and then the derivative of x with respect to time is given element-wise uh, by all the derivatives of x1, x2, and x3 uh, with respect of time. Uh, 3 is just an example. We can go to n here. This is, this is completely general, but I don't want to write that much. Then we can concisely express the system in one equation as x prec is equal to a matrix A times vector x. Matrix A here 3 by 3, general n by n. Uh, x three, here 3 by 1, general n by 1. Now, if I have an eigenpair eigenvalue lambda and corresponding eigenvector v, um, eigenpair of A, then by the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we have that uh, lambda times v is equal to a times v. Uh, so the multiplication of a with the vector v simplifies to multiplication of a number lambda times the vector v. Then uh, it's perfectly fine to just multiply the whole equation through by e to the power of lambda t, right? because uh, that's not equal to zero, so e to the power of lambda t. And if I now define v times e to the lambda t as x, then I observe that x prec is equal to uh, the derivative of a v times e to the lambda t with respect to time. Uh, that's chain rule, and I get lambda times v times e to the lambda t. And this means that uh, this is equal to the left-hand side here. So uh, I can write, therefore, that x prec is equal to a times x. And I have actually found a solution. Yeah. So very simple. The solutions for this group of uh, systems of differential equations is given by the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the coefficient matrix. And therefore, um, the solution theory for linear systems of ordinary differential equations, of first order, I should say, Here is in a sense the same as the diagonalization theory for matrices, for square matrices. Then. That the matrices are square are a necessity because uh, uh, we have uh, we have x and its 
derivative with respect to time on both sides. They certainly have the same number of entries, and so A must be square. Um, and this is why in the title to this video I've written, we're looking at the case of diagonalizable matrices, uh, because the solution theory um, actually is, uh, in a sense, equivalent to the diagonalization theory for matrices, we can here focus first on diagonalizable matrices A in our system of equations. Here. So uh, let's go through the examples that I treated in the uh, eigenvalue videos um, for the different cases. So I'm going to look at one case where we have uh, all distinct real eigenvalues. I'm going to look at a case where we have repeated eigenvalues. I'm going to look at a case where we have complex eigenvalues. No? So let's say that we begin with the case where all eigenvalues are real and distinct. There we looked at the matrix 3, 2, minus 2, 0, 7, 0, 0, minus 2, 5. And by determining the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, we found the eigenvalue decomposition uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 0 times the diagonal matrix 3, 0, 0, 0, 5, 0, 0, 0, 7 times the matrix 1, minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 1. This was our our matrix P, this was our matrix lambda, which contains the eigenvalues on the diagonal, and this was P inverse. If you don't know how to determine this uh, decomposition, uh, please go back to the, to the videos on, on eigenvalues. Yeah, so here we have uh, the, the eigenvectors in P, these are all our, our Vs, and here we have all the eigenvalues, and so we can just construct the solutions to a system of differential equations that is given that is given as x prec equals a times x for this matrix a here. Yeah, but let's first uh, uh, let's first write the system in longhand because uh, it may not be a, a familiar thing yet. So. Uh, what, what does the system actually look like? So let's have a look at matrix A here. This says that uh, the first entry in X, uh, derivative with respect to time, is given by 3 times X1, yeah? plus 0 times X2, plus 0 times X3. The second entry, uh, derivative with respect to time, is given by 2 times X1, plus 7 times x2 minus 2 times x3. The third entry, derivative with respect to time, is given as minus 2 times x1 plus 0 times x2 plus 5 times x3. Yeah? This is the system that we would write as x prec equals ax with this matrix A. And now we see, just by looking at the eigenvalue decomposition, that we have three linearly independent solutions given by the three eigenpairs. These are, I'm now just taking each eigenvector and each eigenvalue. Huh? So this is the first group, and then or the first pair, uh, then the, the second pair, and then the third pair. And I'm going to write each solution as phi1 of t. This is 
my symbol for um, for one solution that then of course is going to say this is a uh, this is going to give me functions x1 of t x2 of t and x3 of t yeah but I'm going to have different ones so uh, I want to use different symbols um, this is the first eigenvector 1 0 1 times e to the power of the first eigenvalue 3t yeah? this is the first eigen the first eigenvalue eigenvector excuse me and the first eigenvalue the second solution is again gives functions for x1, x2, and x3. I'm soon going to stop writing this, but right now I'll do it, just to be very clear. Um, the second eigenvector and the second eigenvalue. So, 0, 1, 1, e to the power of 5t. And the third and now I stop writing this, 0, 1, 0, but of course I still mean the same, e to the power of 70, the third eigenvector at the third eigenvalue. Then we collect these three linearly independent solutions in the fundamental matrix, the fundamental matrix, which I now call capital Phi of T, and this is the matrix that has the three linearly independent solutions in the columns. So if I write these out, I get e to the 3t, 0, e to the 3t. I get 0, e to the 5t, e to the 5t. And I get 0, e to the 70 and 0. This is the fundamental matrix and I note that of course if I take the derivative of the fundamental matrix with respect to time I get chain rule element wise 3e to the 3t 0 3e to the 3t 0, 5e to the 5t, 5e to the 5t, 0, 7e to the 7t, 0. And this is equal to, as you can convince yourself, the product of the matrix A itself, 3, 2, minus 2, 0, 7, 0, 0, minus 2, 5, times phi, times the fundamental matrix itself. e to the 3t, 0, e to the 3t, 0, e to the 5t, e to the 5t, 0, e to the 7t, and 0. Yeah. So the fundamental matrix satisfies the differential equation. Because each column in the fundamental matrix satisfies the differential equation. So that's why it's not surprising. Now, I note something else. I have these three linearly independent solutions. And now I note that all linear combinations of solutions are again solutions. So let's just take the case of two linearly independent solutions and we construct a third solution 
as a linear combination of the first and the second. Yeah, so the coefficients r1 and 2 here are just real numbers. And then I want to show now that x indeed is a solution, that this linear combination is again a solution. So I take the derivative with respect to time. This is r1 times the derivative of phi1 plus r2 times the derivative of phi2. And now uh, the situation is such that these are phi1 and phi2 are solutions. So this means this is r1 times a phi1 by the fact that these are solutions plus r2 times a phi2. Now I'm not writing the explicit dependence on t anymore, but phi1 and phi2 are of course functions of time. That I can write as a times r1 phi1 plus r2 phi2 in parentheses, and this is a times x. And I see indeed the linear combination is again a solution. Okay, so with this insight, I'm going to talk about how to adjust the three linearly independent solutions that we found for our system here to satisfy any arbitrarily given initial condition for the three variables. Yeah? So because we can now uh, form any linear combination of these three solutions in order to satisfy any given uh, initial condition. Okay. So let's say we have the initial condition x, which is a vector of three entries here in our example, in time zero is given by three numbers, a vector that I call x sub zero. This means uh, x one in zero, x two in zero, x three in zero are to satisfy x one zero, x two zero, x three zero, and these are just three numbers. Okay. Now we solve x dot is a x using the matrix exponential series. With the matrix exponential series, we get that x in t is given by e to the a t x in zero. This is exactly as in the scalar case. Uh, if uh, x dot is equal to lowercase a times x where everything is scalar, we get that and we have the initial condition say that this is equal to 1, not equal to 0, in which case the solution would be 0. But for any initial condition not equal to 0, we get that x of t is e to the at x naught. And so now we have the matrix exponential series, and this is an n by n matrix, so here a 3 by 3 matrix. But other than that, it behaves the same. Then x dot is a times e to the a t times x naught. And this is a times x of t. So it satisfies the uh, differential equation. And if we have a eigenvalue decomposition for a, so with a equals p lambda p inverse, we get that e to the a is e to the p lambda p inverse is equal to p e to the lambda p inverse and so e to the a t is p e to the lambda t times p 
inverse e to the lambda is e to the um, diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues in it. And so this is a diagonal matrix, which in, in our case here, for n equal to 3, contains the diagonal elements e to the lambda 1, t, e to the lambda 2, t, e to the lambda 3t, and in the general case, dot dot dot, e to the lambda nt. Yeah? So here in our concrete example, uh, e to the lambda t is the matrix e to the 3t, 0, 0, 0, e to the 5t, 0, 0, 0, e to the 70. We have seen that the fundamental matrix, which contains all the solutions, uh, the eigenvectors times e to the uh, eigenvalue times t, this matrix is p times e to the lambda t, right? Because this is exactly how we formed the fundamental matrix. We took the eigenvectors, now I'm writing them in a matrix, we took the eigenvectors and multiplied them column-wise with the e to the eigenvalue times t. So I can write this as a matrix product if I write e to the eigenvalue times t and the diagonal entries of a, of a matrix, then this is going to multiply the uh, corresponding row with e to the lambda t. So this was, as we saw, and you can convince yourself now, e to the 3t, 0, e to the 3t, 0, e to the 5t, e to the 5t, 0, e to the 7t, e, sorry, zero. Well, that was the fundamental matrix. Now we want to find the solution that satisfies the initial condition. Yeah, so we look again at our solution from applying the concept of the matrix exponential series. And this now needs to satisfy e to the at x sub 0. That's the idea of the initial condition. And now we write e to the at as p times e to the lambda t, not e to the at, sorry, e to the lambda t, um, p inverse x naught. And this we have just seen here is our fundamental matrix phi of t. And then the question is, what's this? No? But that we can, of course, easily calculate. So let's just grab some arbitrary vector uh, we want to satisfy in, uh, uh, in, in point 0. So let's say x0 is given as 7, 10, and minus 2. No? Just some house numbers. Then, well, minus 2 is probably not a house number. Then p inverse x0 is equal to 1 minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 7, 10, minus 2. This is 7, minus 9, and 19. And then now I can just plug in the solution, right? Because because I have everything, I have everything here, right? So I have the um, fundamental matrix, and now I also have p inverse x naught, and so uh, I find the solution that satisfies the 
initial condition that I've just grabbed here out of the blue. So this is, um, and I'm writing it out in longhand, x1 of t, x2 of t, x3 of t, given as phi of t, the fundamental matrix, times p inverse x0, which I have now calculated as 7, minus 9, and 19. And uh, this is the matrix e to the 3t, 0, e to the 3t, 0, e to the 5t, e to the 5t, 0, e to the 7t, 0 times 7 minus 9 and 19. And this is, as you can convince yourself, 7 times e to the 3t minus 9e to the 5t plus 19e to the 7t and 7e to the 3t minus 9e to the 5t. And then we see that indeed x1 in 0 is equal to 7. This is our required x1 0 x2 in 0 is equal to 10. This is our required x2 0. And x3 in 0 is equal to minus 2, which is our required x3 0. So everything worked out. Yeah. That was the case of all distinct eigenvalues. So let's look at the case of repeated eigenvalues. And again, I use the matrix that I have in the corresponding eigenvalue video. So I look at the matrix I look at the matrix 5, 2, 0, 0, 3, 0, minus 2, minus 2, 3. And this, as we found out in that video, is given by the eigenvalue decomposition 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. That's P times lambda now has 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0. So 3 is repeated, 0, 0, 5. And that's lambda. And P inverse is 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, minus 1. Let's write the system out again, because uh, this is our first encounter here. So this is x1 dot is 5x1 minus 2x3, x2 dot is 2x1 plus 3x2, uh, I'm just reading along the line here, plus 3x2 minus 2x3, x3 dot is 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 3x3. The system has three linearly independent solutions given by the three eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And the fact that one of them is repeated doesn't really change anything. So I'm going to write again, every solution is for x1, x2, x3, right? It is now 1, 0, 1, first eigenvector times eigenvalue 3. The second, I'm not going to write the x1, x2, x3 again, 0, 1, 0. And again, that was the repeated eigenvalue. And the third one 
is 1, 1, 0, eigenvector e to the 5t. Yeah? Then we can write our fundamental matrix where we just collect all these solutions in the columns. So we get e to the 3t, 0, e to the 3t, 0, e to the 3t, 0, e to the 5t, e to the 5t, 0. That's the fundamental matrix. Uh, you can check and convince yourself this satisfies the differential equation in a matrix sense. And as before, any given initial condition that x shall uh, take a specific set of values in point zero can be accommodated by calculating um, xt as the fundamental matrix times p inverse times x naught which is p times e to the lambda t p inverse x naught which is e to the a t x naught and we have phi t and we have p inverse and for any given x naught we can simply calculate it as we've done it in the first example i'm not going to do it again here in the interest of time um, rather, I want to get to the third case because that one is a bit more interesting. Um, what about complex eigenvalues? Complex eigenvalues. And again, I look at the matrix that we had in the corresponding eigenvalue video, which was the matrix 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 3. And we found that the eigenvalue decomposition was given by i1, 0, i being the imaginary unit, minus i1, 0, 3 fifth, 1 fifth, and 1. That was p, the three eigenvectors. The eigenvalues were i, minus i, and 3 and p inverse was minus 1 half i, 1 half i and 0, 1 half, 1 half and 0, and minus 1 tenth plus 3 tenth i, minus 1 tenth minus 3 tenth i. If you have um, sorry, there was also plus uh, and one. And now, so this is lambda, this is p inverse. And now, let's write the system down in, in longhand, just so that we see there's nothing complex in the system itself. Yeah? So this can arise in applications naturally because uh, just reading again along the lines, um, uh, this just says uh, this is minus x2 plus 2x3. x2 dot is uh, x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3. And x3 dot is 3x3. So it looks completely innocuous, uh, but it's actually the case of complex eigenvalues and complex eigenvectors. Uh, this system again has now, as we can read from the eigenvalue decomposition, three linearly independent solutions. Um, phi1 is a solution that is x1 of t, x2 of t, x3 of t, is first eigenvector i1, 0 times e to the i t. Second solution is 
minus i one zero was e to the minus i t. That's a nice thing about complex uh, complex eigen values. You get two for the price of one. If you find a complex um, if you find a complex eigenvalue and eigenvector, then the complex conjugate where you just change the sign in front of the i also is an eigenvector. Yeah? So uh, here we see that uh, phi2 is the complex conjugate of phi1 and vice versa. Phi3 is completely real because it corresponds to the uh, real eigenvalue 3. So this was 3 fifth, 1 fifth, 1 e to the 3t. Yeah, so we can uh, write our write our um, fundamental matrix right here by just plugging in uh, these three solutions. But of course, two of them are complex, and we may not be happy with that. But we can again because we have seen that uh, if we have uh, two solutions, then any linear combination of these two solutions is again a solution. So we can use the usual linear combination, linear combinations that we use for complex values in order for complex numbers in order to make them real. In the same fashion, we can here construct two linearly independent real solutions out of the two linearly independent complex solutions by uh, uh, using the insight here that. Uh, um, by using the insight that phi2 is the complex conjugate of phi1 and so I can look at uh, 1 half times phi1 plus phi2 yeah any linear combination of two solutions is again a solution and 1 half phi1 plus phi2 this is 1 half times i e to the i t minus i e to the i t minus i t excuse me um, e to the i t plus e to the minus i t and zero yeah that still looks pretty complex but in fact it isn't uh, so let's figure out what it is so this is one half and now I'm just using Euler so I have i times e to the i t that's cosine of t plus i sine of t minus i times this is e to the minus i t so cosine of t minus i times sine of t and then the second entry is just cosine of t plus i sine of t plus cosine of t minus i sine of t and here of course i have z yeah um, this is, let me write it here. Oh, I can I can squeeze this down. I can squeeze it down here. This is a one half times now uh, i cosine of t neutralizes here as we can see. Uh, so I have plus i sine sine of t um, minus minus is uh, um, I, I'm sorry. I have uh, let me write this out. I have i square sine of t um, minus i square plus i square sine of t. So this is, since i square is minus 1, uh, this is minus 2 times sine of t. And here I have just 2 times cosine of t and then I have 0. And uh, uh, this of course is 1 half times um, minus 2 sine of t, 2 cosine of t, and 0. And this is minus sine of t, cosine of t, and 0. This is my first real solution that I get from the usual trick of uh, bringing a, a complex number and its complex conjugate down to a real Then I do the same thing the other way around, going for the 
going for the sine component, phi 1 minus phi 2 divided by 2i. This is 1 over 2i times i e to the i t plus plus i e to the minus i t. e to the i t minus e to the minus i t and 0. And again I use Euler, so I get 1 over 2i, i times cosine of t plus i sine of t plus i times cosine of t minus i sine of t and cosine of t plus i sine of t minus cosine of t minus minus so plus i sine of t and zero This is 1 over 2i, and now I get i cosine of t plus i cosine of t. This is 2i cosine of t. Uh, i square sine of t minus i square sine of t, that's 0. So I'm left with 2i cosine of t. And here I have uh, cosine of t minus cosine of t, and then plus 2 times i sine of t and 0. And so I get cosine of t and sine of t as my second linearly independent solution which is completely real. And then I can write the fundamental matrix with all real entries. The fundamental matrix with all real entries. So using these two solutions I have minus sine of t cosine of t and 0, cosine of t, sine of t and 0, and then the real part anyway, uh, 3 fifths e to the 3t, 1 fifth e to the 3t, and e to the 3t. That's my fundamental matrix. And then I can convince myself that phi dot which is now, okay, what's the uh, derivative of sine? That's cosine, so here we have minus cosine of t, then the derivative of cosine is minus sine of t, zero minus sine of t, the derivative of sine is cosine, and zero, and then here I have three times three, this is nine fifth e to the three t, and three times one, this is three fifth e to the three t, and three e to the three t, uh, that this, is indeed a times phi. If you write out this matrix product with the given matrix A, which was which was this one here, you will see uh, that indeed you get this derivative matrix. Yeah. So that's the uh, case of diagonalized or matrices. And uh, so what have we seen? We have seen that for this type of equation, x prec x dot equal to ax, um, uh, using the eigenvalue decomposition of A, we can uh, completely uh, find all solutions if this eigenvalue decomposition exists, and we can adjust all solutions to uh, arbitrarily given initial conditions, yeah, which here works in the in the in the complex case, of course, in just the same way because now I'm left with just a real uh, fundamental matrix, so I can just for to to adjust to any uh, uh, to any initial condition, I can just write phi t uh, uh, p inverse um, x naught, and uh, then I have it, yeah. So um, that's the diagonalizable case and uh, in another video I'm going to talk about the non-diagonalizable case. Thanks for watching.